few weeks ago, a paper came out saying that patients with heart disease, heart disease, had worse outcomes if they get infected with SARS-CoV-2 and have COVID-19. That their outcomes are worse. And of course, that caused a lot of anxiety throughout my community of patients and families with genetic heart disease. With a variety of genetic heart diseases like long QT syndrome, CPVT, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and so forth, and asking the question, do I belong in that group where COVID-19 will be worse in me because I have heart disease? Hello, I'm Mike Ackerman, genetic cardiologist here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and the director of the Mayo Clinic Winland Smith Rice Genetic Heart Rhythm Clinic and the Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory. And on behalf of the team of investigators here at Mayo Clinic and investigators throughout the world, I'm really excited to share with you some highlights of our article being published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our article is entitled, Marked Upregulation of ACE2 in Hearts of Patients with Obstructive Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy, Implications for SARS-CoV-2 Mediated COVID-19. This work is a long work in the making. It actually dates back 20 years from the first flash frozen surgical myectomy specimen from Dr. Hartzell Schaff and Dr. Joe Duraney for the surgical operation of our patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, and septal reduction therapy. Surgical myectomy is the gold standard for the treatment of our patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and we do more cases of it here at Mayo Clinic than probably anywhere in the world. This also allowed us a tremendous research opportunity by having a sample of flash frozen muscle, heart muscle, removed from the hearts of the patients to relieve their symptoms of left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. And over the course from 1999 to 2010, we were able to archive and build a repository of frozen tissue from the surgical myectomies. This really has been a treasure chest for us. And we started that process in 2010 to analyze the data, to look at the so-called transcriptome of these patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, at least at the time that the hearts were removed, the heart muscle tissue was removed at the time of surgery. And we had a master's thesis from one of our former cardiology trainees, Dr. Virginia Hebel, who was analyzing the transcriptome with my research team. And she did and published her master's thesis from this work in 2012 under the direct mentorship of the first author of this article, Dr. Martine Boss. We didn't know exactly how to tell the story back then. We were seeing genes that were upregulated and transcripts that were downregulated and looking at these differentially regulated genes and some up, some down, some sideways and definitely different from normal tissue. We knew that over 20% of the human transcriptome was being differentially regulated up, down, sideways by the disease process of obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or HCM. And that's where it sort of stalled. But that was so BC, before Corona. Because you see, about six weeks ago, as we started learning more and more about the SARS-CoV-2 mediated COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic that we're in, we started hearing things about how this coronavirus hijacks a particular protein to gain entrance into heart muscle cells and gain entrance into lung tissue. And that hijacked receptor protein is called ACE2. That struck a bell, a memory. And in fact, we had a flashback memory about at the same time, one of the senior co-authors, Dr. Frank Brozovich, a colleague of mine here in our Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at Mayo Clinic, I think we sent the email to each other at almost the same time. Didn't, wasn't ACE2 transcript upregulated in our HCM frozen myectomy specimens? And now you say, 
the rest of the story. Martine Boss jumped on the data set, reviewed what we had assembled back then, and indeed, out of all of the transcripts in the human transcriptome, and there are probably, there's 20 to 25,000 genes, there's probably on the order of anywhere from 50 to 200,000 unique transcripts, and out of all of the transcripts in the human transcriptome, the single most upregulated transcript was the ACE2 transcript. That was sort of the aha moment of when dealt lemons make lemonade. And we looked at our data set, we confirmed it with quantitative PCR, and that transcript is the most upregulated. And most importantly, we showed by Western blot measuring the protein itself, not the tr just the gene or the transcribed gene product, the transcript, but the translated product, the protein. And indeed, the ACE2 protein level in the heart tissue at the time of surgical myectomy was five times higher than in normal tissue. Now there was a story to be told, a really exciting story. It's higher regardless of what got the heart to that level of obstructive HCM, whether it was myosin heavy chain HCM or myosin binding protein C HCM or obstructive HCM with no identifiable genetic cause. The ACE2 levels, protein levels, are higher. And in fact, they're highest in females with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, about 30% higher than in males with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So what does this all mean? Well, it means the aha moment, we think, for the why. Under what we call heart disease are hundreds of different heart diseases. And no, if you have long QT syndrome, if you have CPVT, if you have Brugada syndrome, you're at no greater risk of a bad COVID-19 outcome than I am without any particular heart disease if you're otherwise young and healthy. But what kind of heart diseases may in fact be at higher risk? Well, I think the answer has come. It's those heart diseases where that disease process is causing an accentuation and increase in protein levels of ACE2. And now we see that it's not just obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There was a small paper published just last month of eight patients, eight patients, where in heart failure, where a different kind of heart disease, where the pump doesn't squeeze very well, it's weak. In eight heart failure patients, the ACE2 levels were higher. We see it now in this collection over, of over 100 patients with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So what's going on? Well, ACE2 didn't rise because coronavirus was gonna come someday. We think, and others think, that increase of ACE2 is a patho-responsive reaction. It's the heart's way to, quote, heal thyself or to try to counter the stress and the threat of the obstructive HCM disease process. And as we show in figure three, the normal purpose of increased levels of ACE2 as the heart's reaction is to try to counter the bad protein, if you will, of angiotensin II. And angiotensin II's fibrotic effect, pro-hypertrophic effect, vasoconstricting effect, ACE2, that protein, that enzyme, that receptor, converts angiotensin II to a protective polypeptide, angiotensin 1-7 and angiotensin 1-9. And that converted polypeptide has an antifibrotic effect, an antihypertrophy effect, a vasodilatory effect. Makes sense then, doesn't it, that the heart is trying to compensate. It's a patho-responsive reaction. But that too was BC, before corona. 
because now we have a different problem with ACE2 accentuating disease processes like obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and perhaps heart failure. Is that this five-fold increase that we've seen in the protein levels of ACE2 gives five times the amount of receptors for the virus to hijack and use to steal entry into the heart muscle cells. Perhaps that's why that there are they, these kind of patients with these kind of heart diseases may be at greater risk. This is also why it's incredibly important for heart disease patients who are on ACE inhibitors like lisinopril or angiotensin receptor blockers like Losartan to stay on those medications as advised by all of the leading cardiac societies for now and perhaps indefinitely as we learn more because we may in fact learn that they're not dangerous to be on them, that they may be actually really, really important and protective to stay on them because an angiotensin receptor blocker then blocks and prevents angiotensin II from getting to start its process of fibrotic process, hypertrophic process, vas vasoconstricting process, a process that will be easier in these patients who not only have five times higher levels of ACE2 for the virus to steal entry, but when the virus steals entry into those cells, it takes that ACE2 protein with it. And therefore, we lose our counterbalance from the ill effects of excess angiotensin II. Stay on your medications. We will be learning a lot. We, for now, think we have connected the dots, as we've shown in Figure 4, as to why certain heart disease patients may be more vulnerable to a heart reaction from coronavirus infection. And if there are increased levels of ACE2 in the lung in these patients, if not proven, that that may explain why they have more severe respiratory insult. Much work to be done for sure. We don't know if this applies to all patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There's only the subset with obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is just one subset. We don't know yet if after you do the surgical myectomy and you relieve the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, do ACE2 protein levels decrease? We don't know if this applies to non-obstructive HCM patients or apical HCM patients. We don't know what other heart diseases are ACE2 accentuating heart diseases, where the ACE2 transcript and ACE2 protein levels increase. We're working on that. And we will soon learn, is this true in hypertension? Are ACE2 protein levels in the heart higher? Is this true in dilated cardiomyopathy? Are ACE2 protein levels higher? We will learn that and we'll learn whether this is the common denominator as to the answer behind the question, why do certain patients with certain heart diseases do worse when they get infected with SARS-CoV-2? We think this is the answer. So what do we do about it? What do our patients do about it who might have an ACE2 accentuating heart disease like obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Several things. First, no fear. Knowledge is power. No need to be anxious. Stay on your treatment program. This, if anything, it will do the second thing, give you more vigilance and incentive to do all of the precautionary measures that work. Don't get slack on the safety measures. Remember the physical distancing six feet. Keep that. Don't slack off on that. Wash your hands with soap and water. Don't slack off on that. Take your temperature. Don't cut corners and get lulled into thinking that this coexistence with SARS-CoV-2 is not a big deal. It's a big deal. Stay alert, stay vigilant, stay masked in public, do the social masking. 
Do not change your medications on your own. Stay on them if you've been prescribed medications to treat your heart. Just know and be encouraged that the community of scientists, physicians, and physician scientists throughout the world are dedicated to your heart diseases and we are dedicated to try to find the answers as to the why. And here we think we found at least part of the answer. Thanks so much for joining me today and I do hope you enjoy this article in Mayo Clinic Proceedings that summarizes over 20 years worth of work in this topic. Take care everyone. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.